Okay, page 87 of this uh, volume 1 uh, PDF of the Acts and Monuments. A chronology. And uh, 941 in the year of Christ. We have monks are put out of Yushim Monastery. And canons put in their place. Odo, Archbishop of Canterbury, lived to this Edmund's time and called a synod to stir up ministers to preach. Dunstan is now abbot of Glastonbury in this king's time before he was archbishop of Canterbury. All right, in 942 we have Martin three alias Marinus II Agapetus II that's Roman bishops. And the Archbishop of Canterbury was Elpheus. Of Pope Martin III and Agapetus II, see the first great volume, page 189. Lord willing, eventually we'll get to that. Uh, King Edmund is slain by Poker Church. See the first great volume, page 196, column 1, line 21. So in, in 946, year of Christ, the kings of England, Edwin. Edwin, the eldest son of King Edmund, succeeds in the throne after King Edmund. Alright, 955. This King Edwin kept a strange woman, the wife of a man whom he had slain, as some say, to which woman he, on the first day of his coronation, breaking from his lords and going into the chamber, Dunstan, abbot of Glastonbury, follows him, brings him back by the hand, accuses him to Otho, archbishop. Otho separates him from the woman, and suspends him out of the church. For this, Dunstan is made fly over the sea, and the monks, as well in other monasteries as Dunstan's of Glastonbury, are thrust out, and secular priests put in their room. All right, of the Roman bishops, we have John 13. This was Pope John the Twelfth, as others reckon. He was an adulterer, a whoremaster, an incestuous person, an extortioner, a gambler. From his wicked merriment and these evils came the proverb, as merry as Pope John. He cuts out the tongues, puts out the eyes, cuts off the noses and fingers of his cardinals. He himself at last is deposed, but after restored, of him see the first great volume, page 205. That's of Pope John the Thirteenth. This says, ah, so here it says Pope John the Twelfth, as others reckon. Here it says John the Thirteenth. Okay, 959. We have of Roman bishops down here, Leo the Eighth. We have Edgar as a king of England, and the Archbishop of Canterbury is Duastan. Edwin is hated for his misdemeanors of his subjects, chiefly them of Northumberland and Mercia by whom he is removed from his kingly honor, and Edgar received in his stead, so that the river Thames divided both their kingdoms. Edward, having reigned four years alone, dies without heir, and so Edgar his brother succeeds. In 959, Edgar, he began his reign this year, being fifteen years old, but was not crowned till fourteen years after. He calls home exiled Dunstan, makes him Bishop of Worcester, then of London. 
Dunstan. Here it's, yes, yeah, so this is Dunstan. Ortho and Odo, Archbishop dying. King Edgar makes Dunstan Archbishop. This Pope Leo, of whom see the first great volume, page 205, was substituted Pope in the room of the former deposed Pope John. But the said John being restored, this Leo was deposed. Of this Pope Leo, see page 205 of the first great volume, column 2, line 33 and line 38. Nine sixty three. Dunstan gets the king to make Owaldus nephew of Otho, as it is said, Bishop of Worcester. Not long after the said King Edgar, at Dunstan's entreaty, made Ethelwaldus first monk of Glastonbury, then abbot of Abendon, to be Bishop of Winchester. Of him is related a vision appearing to him of a tree whose branches covered the four quarters of the kingdom and were covered with monk's cows and with one master cow on the top, etc. Whether this dream be feigned or no, it was made good in effect. Dunstan, Oswald, and Ethelwald making monks to swarm in this Edgar's time in England. So in 963 AD, apparently there were a lot of monks around England. 964. That's when you have Benedict V. The Romans setting up this Benedict after Pope John and not setting in and restoring again Pope Leo VIII, deposed contrary to the Emperor Otho his mind. The said Emperor besieged Rome and puts in again Leo VIII, who gratifies the Emperor with giving to him and his successors in a synod the power of electing the Pope. In 965 and 969 you get John the Fourteenth. Alias John the Thirteenth. Of him see the first great volume, page 205. Oswald, make, made Archbishop of York, by policy makes many priests turn monks or to leave their place. Monks anciently were but strict laymen, insomuch as they were forbidden to meddle with ecclesiasticals. Basilus Magnus and Nazian Zenus were monks. The ground of men's founding monasteries of latter times was that monks might pray for them when they were dead, or else by way of satisfaction for some murder committed by the founders. King Edgar was a good ju 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 King Edgar was a good justiciary in execution of laws justly. This king made his land one perfect monarchy. This king, having subdued men, drives out to the wolves out of this land. He was exceeding watchful and well provided for defense of the seas. To prevent drunkenness in his subjects, he caused to be made cups with pins to be set in them adding a law that he that drank at a draught beyond his mark was to pay a penny, half to the accuser, the rest to the ruler of the town. Eight kings called Sebru Subreguli did homage to this Edgar, whom in pomp he made to row him in a boat, himself holding the helm. He was given to woman and a great monk maker and a deflowerer of a nun, for which Dunstan refused to take him by the hand. When the king offered it, 
and enjoins the king penance for seven years of wearing no crown that time, or fasting twice in the week of liberality to the poor and building a nunnery. In 971 and 972, Doting Dunstan was drowned in superstition if not a sorcerer too. He is said to catch the devil by the nose with a pair of tongs red hot. Meanwhile, this looks like uh, between 972 and 974. The Emperor of Germany is Otho II. For Rome, we have Benedict VI, Donus II, uh, and later Boniface VII. Okay, in 971, 972, Pope John IV said, ordained the first christening of bells. Of John Bin, the sixth C, the first great volume, page, ah, uh, of John Ben the sixth, see the first great volume, page 206, where he is cast into prison and slain. Of Pope Donus, see the first great volume, page 206. Of Pope Boniface the uh, so Boniface the seventh, this Boniface the seventh, and this John the what is that fifth or fifteenth are both popes at once. Edward the Martyr. Uh, yeah, John the 15th. This Boniface, fearing conspiracy, flies to Constantinople. Meanwhile, Pope John the 15th, alias the 14th, is made Pope. Then Boniface returns, and so are two popes at the same time. See said page 206. This, these... T what, uh, this over here is page 203 and 204. Much stir at this time about placing and displacing monks. Cause stir about the crown. Monks aiming at such a king as would be a monk favorer. At last this Edward by Dunstan's means was chosen. This Edward was not in truth a martyr as the common opinion goes but was truly a bastard. 976, others count eight years more. Of this, John the 15th, alias, as others will, John the 14th, and Boniface, and their ends, see the first great volume, page 206, column 1. John, having his eyes put out, and he himself famished in prison, Boniface dies, and after is dragged through the city, the people triumphing in it. 977. An image of the crucifix of Rood by Dunstan's device is made to answer to a council met and praying to this image. Such an answer as might carry the conclusion as Dunstan would in these words. What is that? Absit, bak, ut, fiat etc. Far be that, far be that. You have well judged, you would not do well to change. Dunstan was a great enemy to priests' wives. King Edward, his stepmother offering him as he sat on horseback a cup of beer whilst he was drinking, caused her servant to stab him whereupon he rides away towards his company, falls down dead, and so was found. But not known who he was, nor how he died, his horse having dragged him through much dirt, his foot hanging in the stirrup, as he fell dead off his horseback, two nunneries are founded upon his blood, that that murderous queen had shed. Benedict the Seventh. This Benedict, whom 
R-E-U-S-N and H-E-L-V put before the former Pope John, yea, though he be taken for John the Fourteenth, was made Pope by consent of Otho, Emperor, the second of the name. In the time of this Benedict, Gilbertus, a necromancer, is made Archbishop of Reigns by Hugh Capet, the French king. All right, so for England, around 979, we get Egelred or Elred. In the time of Benedict, oh, okay, uh, Gilbertus and Necromancers made Archbishop of Reigns by Eucap, the French king. Edward being murdered, the crown comes to this Elred, his younger brother. This Elward reigned long, v. 38 years, but very unhappily, as he was christened, being a child, by Dunstan, somewhat falling cross. Dunstan swears by the Holy Virgin that this will be an untoward prince. Let's see, 981, 984, Otho III in Germany. 985, 988, year 989, after Christ. We got Ethelgar and Canterbury. He is crowned this year by Dunstan, who pronounced, as they say at his coronation, that because he came to the crown by the murder of his brother, the kingdom should not be without bloodshed, till the people of a strange tongue did enthrall them. Okay, year 990. Um, Kings of Britain in Wales. Archbishop of Canterbury. Elfricus. All right, so John the 16th, alias John the 15th, he fare Pope eight months. The Dines' understanding of discord in this land and the subjects to be disaffected towards their prince invade this kingdom doing great spoil. See the first great volume, page 207. John the Seventeenth, alias John the Sixteenth. In 995, Siricius Sanctus Elordus. This year of Bishopric of Dursum began. Upon occasion of B. Aldudunus, his carrying S. Cuthbert's body thither. See the first great volume, page 207. Under Rome, you have Gregory V and John XVIII, both popes, together. Again, this Gregory, malice because he was German, was set up this John the Eighteenth, alias John the Seventeenth, by Crescentius, Council of Rome, Rome, whereupon Otho the Third Emperor, to whom Gregory the Fifth flies, comes with an army, apprehends John, puts out his eyes, and after puts him to death, and apprehends Crescentius, cuts off his nose and ears, and after sold through the city, having his members cut off, he hanged upon a gibber. Gregory is restored, reigns Pope four years. This year London is besieged of the Danes. The Danes spoiling the land caused the English levy of Danget amounting from 10,000 per annum to 40,000 per annum paid to the Danes to buy peace of them. Now came in the Lord Dane, I, the Lord Dane, who was Lord of the English man's house goods and wife too. In 997 the empire established in Germany by ordaining seven electors by the Pope. 
Pope Gregory V being restored to the Popedom calls a council at Rome by the advice of Otho III Emperor and there too confirm the empire in Germany his own country decrees those seven should be electors of the emperor which are to this day the Bishop of Mintz, Triers, Cullen, Doe elect the emperor are his chancellor too Bohemia's king elects and bears his cup and Saxon's duke elects his sword holds up Archchever is Elector Palatine and Marques Brandenburg his Chamberlain these verse verses in Latin see the first great volume page 206 year 1000 Sylvester a made Pope by magic the years of Christ amounting to a thousand. Religion began much more to decay than in former times. Pope Sylvester II being a sorcerer and a most heinous wicked instrument. See the first great volume, page 215. This year the Saxons that had driven the Britons from their land make way by Elrids joining in marriage with the Normans, raking to wife Emma, the daughter of Rich, the first of the, that name, the third Duke of Normandy, for a new plague to come upon themselves. For Alred, in confidence of his affinity, gave secret and strict charge to all towns in England. Upon S. Bryce his day, at a certain hour, the Danes should be all slain, which caused much trouble. Alias John the 18th, he brings in the Feast of All Souls. See the first great volume, page 216. Okay, so here it's John 19, 1003, 1004. For upon tidings of this at Denmark, King Swainus of Denmark comes into the land, beats down Exeter, and so came on, spoiling the country. At length they are beaten out by Duke Uscatel. Uh, these are on page 207 and 208. John 20. Herein Master Fox differs from others who put no John between. All souls John and Pope Sergius the fourth. 1004 and 1006. The Danes land again in this kingdom at Sandwich. The king at last was fain to pay them a tribute of thirty thousand pounds. Archbishop of Canterbury um, is Elphegius or Elphege. Many times after in his king's time did the Danes invade and spoil. They stoned to death at Greenwich Elphegius, Archbishop of Canterbury, because he would not pay them such taxes as they would impose. In 1012 you have in Rome Benedict the Eighth. The king is driven out of the land to Normandy by the tyranny of the Danes. They, meanwhile, laying intolerable taxes on the people of this land, whereupon they fell to prayer and to fasting, so that shortly Swainus, the prince of the Danes, died suddenly, yelling and crying. In fear whereof, Canatus, his son, reigned here with show of much favor to the people of living. Archbishop, see the first great volume, page 215. So, let's see, 1013, Livingus or Lifwing. 1016, in England, you have Edmund Ironside, a Saxon, and Canatus, a Dane, kings together in England. Egelred returns, hearing of Swainus, his death, and coming upon Canatus, the son being unprovided, caused him to fly into Denmark. But afterward, Canatus came again and took West Saxon. After Egelred's death, much faction being moved, whom to choose for king, Londoners being for Edmund Ironside, Egelred's eldest son, others, and chiefly the clergy, being for Swainus' son, V. Canatus, 
having sworn to Swainus his father, Edmund and Canatus fight many battles for the kingdom, and at last a duel between themselves. Last of all they agreed to divide the land between them, and so lived in love till Edmund was stabbed in the fundament by the traitorous son of Duke Edricus, as he was at the drought house. Then Duke Edricus himself, liking his son's fact, it should seem carried Edmund's two sons to Canatus. With these words, Ave Rex Solus, God save the, the king alone, Canatus sends them to his brother Swainus, king of Swevelin, to be murdered. But he, abhorring that blondinus, sent them to Salmon, king of Hungary, when the, where the one died a natural death, the other named Edward was married to Agatha, daughter of his brother, Henry the Fourth, emperor. Meanwhile, we get John the Twenty-One in Rome, alias John the Nineteenth. R-E-U-S-N-H-E-L-V, of him in Master Fox, see the first great volume, page 216. He was made Pope by magic, as Master Fox saith in the same page. 1032, Benedict the Ninth, he is deposed. Canatus, this while, to make safe the English crown to himself, swears some, banisheth others, puts to death others, among which was Duke Edricus. For though Canatus loved his treason, yet did not dare trust the traitor that put to death Edmund Ironside, his own natural prince. 1038, Eadson or Eadsius, that's Archbishop in Canterbury. The Archbishop Eadson is not named by Master Fox, as we can find, though he names him before and after him. See the first great volume, page 215, column 2. Canatus governed this land twenty years, in all which time the Danes began by little and little to be Christian men. 1039, Henricus III called Niger. Uh, that would be Germany. Canatus dies. Harold Tirefoot, so called for his swiftness, his son reigns in England in his stead. This Henry the Fourth Emperor was excommunicated by four popes. See the first great volume, page two forty five, column two. Hard Hardecnutus, his brother, King of Denmark, was after him King of England. Of Henricus the Third, Emperor, see the first great volume, page two sixteen. About this time, wicked Earl Godwin played his feats. King Hardenut, the last of the Danish kings of England, having reigned here two years, dies without issue. ten forty three King of England Edward Confessor The Danes from their first landing in Brightricus time, having vexed this land fifty five years, and having two hundred and fifty five years, and having reigned as kings twenty eight years, now the last of them being dead without issue, the crown comes to Edward the younger son of Egelred, a mere Englishman, returning from his banishment in Normandy, Normandy, caused by the Danish kings, he was sent for by the Englishmen and crowned this year. His disposition was much averse from war. 1045, you have Roman Bishop Sylvester III, Benedict IX restored, and Gregory VI, all three popes at once. Pope Benedict the Ninth, as we said, coming to the Pope by magic and opposing Henricus the Third, Emperor, and putting in his rooms Petrius, King of Hungary, after fearing Henry the Fourth prevailing against him, sold his feet to Gregory, his seat to Gregory the Sixth, 
for 1,500 pounds. Of this, Gregory, see the fifth, first great volume, page 216, column 2. 1046, we got Clement II in Rome. Contention moved between this King Edward and Earl Godwin. Happened about this time, in which Earl Godwin and his five sons were outlawed. Of these three popes, see the first great volume, page 216, column 2, where Henricus Niger, emperor, displaced these three and puts in Clement II and thereupon enacting that no bishop of Rome should be chosen without the consent of the emperor. And the Romans swear their assent to this act. Clement II. William, Duke of Normandy, comes to see the king and is welcomed, he promising him as some right that if he died without issue, he the said William, Duke of Normandy, should have his kingdom. The Romans, forgetting their oath to the emperor in nine months, poison this pope. See the first great volume, page 216. In 1049, Earl Godwin, that had murdered the king's brother, Alfred, wishing to excuse to the king that the bread he was eating might not be swallowed safely if he were not guiltless of his death, was presently choked and so died. Demasus II and Leo IX in Rome. Of Demasus and Leo, see the first great volume, page 216, column 2. In 1050, of him, see the first great volume, page 215, column 1, line 48. Harold, who after was king, was a means of his banishment in the time of this King Edward. Um, in the Archbishops of Canterbury, you have Robbers and Stigandus. Of, uh, of Archbishop Robert, see the first great volume, page 220. Of Stigandus, of this Archbishop, Stigandus, see the first great volume, page 215. In 1052, Pope Victor, to, Victor II. Of this Pope, see the first great volume, page 217, column 1, line 20. 1055, Victor II, King Edward sends to Henry IV, Emperor, praying him to send to the King of Hungary, that his cousin Edward, son of Edwin Ironside, might come into England, for as much as he intended to make him king after him, this request was fulfilled, and he came into England with his wife and children. Page 213 in this volume. 1057, Henricus IV in Germany, Stephen IX in Rome. This Henry emperor began his, began his reign, being a child. Of him see the first great volume, page 211, column 1, and page 217, column 2. The year following, his cousin Edward dies. In 1058, in Rome, you get Benedict X. This Ben and Nicholas, both popes, do reign at once. Of Pope Benedict X and Nicholas II, see the first great volume, page 217, column 1, line 60, and so on. Then the king thought to make that Edward's son, Edgar, Adeling, his heir, but fearing by the pride of Harold the son of Godwin and the mutability of English hearts, he should not affect it sent ambassadors to William, Duke of Normandy, his kinsman, assigning him to be lawful heir next to su succeed him to the crown. Okay, so this is, uh, I'll, I'll go to the end of 1058 and then stop. So Roman bishops, Nicholas II. Not long after Godwin being dead, his son Harold grows so wickedly proud that he ruled all as king by reason that the king somewhat favored him. At length, he sailing towards Flanders and being driven by tempest into Normandy, there William, Duke of Normandy, makes him to swear he would marry his daughter, and that after King Edward's death he should keep the land of England to his behoof, according to the will and mind of King Edward, and so to live next to him, in honor and dignity in the realm, at his return to England, 
he roused King Edward what he had sworn to Duke William of Normandy, with which the king was well pleased. Okay, Lord willing, we will pick up with 1059 in the next video.